Hey, Stuka Lady from Uke Mullum here with some tips on how to develop a great sounding strum. For our purposes today, we're going to use the Z chord. The Z chord is when you place your fingers very lightly on the strings, so lightly that they don't resonate at all. If you press a little bit, you might get that little sound there. We're trying to avoid that by keeping it perfectly light. So you have a nice percussive sound. Now, 98% of the people I teach are there to learn how to strum. And what that really means is they're learning rhythm. So first of all, there's the technique of the strum. It's been explained by many great teachers. My favorite mentors are of course, James Hill and Stuart Fuchs from Ukulele Zen. The way I teach how to strum is as so. So start off with you putting your hand out to open the door and you're twisting the doorknob. And from there you can see that your wrist is twisting. Now point to the floor and keep that motion up and bring that back here. And there you have your twisty wrist. Now what I'm doing right now is kind of impractical and not a real world situation, but it is a way to develop and understand the mechanism of your wrist twisting. So I like to think of it as pointing straight up to the ceiling and twisting down to point down at the ground. I don't actually play like that, but this is like an athlete would do to develop a good running technique or rowing or any of these things to really accentuate that movement. So I'm using one point of contact, which is my index finger, and I'm using the nail on the way down and the fleshy part of my finger on the way up. There are lots of different other strums. I'm gonna concentrate on this one today. So there is a combination of your wrist twisting and also as James Hill calls it, the gavel motion which is like the judge on the desk banging his gavel. That's like a, a big movement and it's kind of wasted really, isn't it? If you, you don't really need to come all the way up here and down there because the neck of the ukulele is, begins here and ends there. So you only need to use a slight combination of gavel and twisting. I find I generally don't move my forearm very much at all when I'm strumming. It mostly comes from the wrist, but there is just a little bit of there going on, a little bit of up and down motion. And when I want to give it some as well, give it some meaning, you know, play with some force. Okay, so we have our down, up, down, up, down, up motion. And... On the downs, we are counting one, two, three, four, of course, if we're playing in four, four time, which is, let's face it, the most common. That's why it's called common time. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Down with my nail. And when we do the upstrokes with the flesh of our finger, we use and. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. I like to call that the pendulum motion. So we are using that motion to form most of our strums. In fact, I would say you want to be keeping this pendulum for all of the strums that you play. So let's look at a syncopated strum pattern. The first one I like to teach is called, for some reason, the church strum. And that is, we're going to go down, come up and miss the string, down, up, down, come up, miss the string, down, up. So if I was to play that like so, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. I'm voicing the strokes that I come in contact with the string. If you were to turn the volume down on what I'm playing, it would still look like that. 
down, down, up, 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 down, down, up. Or one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. How's that going? Is that working for you? Now, here is the secret to a good sounding strum. This is the one thing that I think as players we need to develop, and that is the backbeat. The backbeat is simply the beats two and four. They're the beats that the drummer would play on the snare drum. Kick, snare, kick, snare. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So, when we're playing with our strum, we need to accent the beats two and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. There's different ways that you can create this accent, and that can be by just playing with a bit more force. Uh, I like the way James Hill explains his stroke as trying to flick water or paint off your fingers. So it comes through like that, and you can really exaggerate that in the beginning, so that you can really define that stroke. So you are playing a definite accent. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If we're to do that with our church drum, one, two, and three, four, and down, down, up, down, down, up. Mr. Stu Fuchs from Ukulele Zen calls this bum, diddy, bum, diddy, bum, diddy, bum, diddy. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. This is my favourite way of creating that accent, and that is by using the flick. We use these three fingers, and actually, it's all four, but it turns out that your pinky doesn't actually come in contact with the string. Down, flick up, 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 down, flick up. Now, I'm not doing any more force when I do my flick. It's just the fact that we have three fingers striking the strings that gives us more mass and greater volume. To me, that is the easiest way to create that accent stroke or the backbeat. Down, down, up, 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 down. The advantage to playing your accent using the flick, down, flick, up, down, flick, up, down, flick, up, is that you are one step away from the chuck, which is you follow through with your fingers and land on the strings so that you're muting the sound like this. So let's play a C chord and do our accented strum, the backbeat, just using the flick. Down, flick up, down, flick up, down, flick up, down, flick up. And now we're going to use the chuck. So we're going to follow through and land on the strings, like so, in one movement. Nothing to it. Here we go. Down, chuck up, down, chuck up.
So there you have it. Of course, all the other strums that you learn, like the island strum, it works in there too. Down, chuck up, up, chuck up, down, chuck up, up, chuck up, down, flick up, up, flick up, down, flick up, up, flick up, down, chuck up, up, chuck up, down, chuck up. So to revise what we've learnt today, the down beats. Down, 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 down. One, two. Three, four, count and on the ups. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. One and two and three and four and. Nail of the finger on the way down, the flesh of the finger on the way up. And we want to create that back beat on the two and the four, which I like to use the flick or the chuck. New strings, we're gonna to have to tune this ukulele. Go ahead and like this video now and leave me a comment below. I love to hear from you. Share this with your friends. Please subscribe if you haven't already and remember to click the notification bell so you never miss a tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.